Welcome to vacuum plate part two. This is the same plate I made in the last video, except it's black now. I give a Fusion 360 class here and there, and interesting enough is that um, I demonstrated this plate in the class and it sucked itself down to the glass table. So my two coats of shellac did not seal it. This is latex acrylic paint and now it's sealed. I would like to show you today the Venturi pump that uh, I already introduced last time. So we're gonna try this out and see how much vacuum we pull with that. I also like to show you a small vacuum pump out of an air dryer. A uh, refrigerant unit would do the same thing or a pump from the refrigerator. And then I also have a bypass pump. That's, I need to see if I get it going for this video or if we're out of time, but it's a regenerative blower. And I will tell you also the advantages of each. So let's get going right now. Why would you want a vacuum plate in the first place? So I will show you today that it is really an efficient way of work holding for woodworking. I showed you last time that I fastened it down to my MFT table, but I'm also gonna show you that I have actually a foot switch that operates that and that makes it really, really convenient because you have two hands free for, for your tools actually and um, it's very fast. So next is that thin material like this one here. This is uh, made by Trotec. Um, Trotec has also an Amazon store. I've bought from them several times. It's actually a, um, a material for signs. So it is a plastic material, it's black in the, and it has a brushed aluminum on the top. Well, my point is that it's really flexible and thin. So how do you want to engrave uh, letters into this? And the vacuum holding comes in really handy with this. If you want to use tape and glue that down onto your table, the problem is going to be that you can't get that back off without bending it or damaging it often. Um, so the vacuum plate is really good for holding down thin material. Next is if you want to batch out a whole lot of material, you can make a plate that indexes your parts. So you know already in your cam where every single part is and then hold that down with vacuum, like in a small pocket. And that makes it uh, really, really efficient. And it's a super way of clamping your material down. So what are the limits for vacuum holding? I think the size of the part is probably the most limiting factor. So the smaller the part is, the smaller the holding or clamping force will be. Um, so the vacuum needs a larger area to really be effective in clamping the material down. I'll calculate later on of how many pounds or how many newtons would be the right word. We are seeing actually in, in pressure uh, for the part being pushed down onto the vacuum plate. Okay, the air connection is actually uh, set to 8 bar or about 115 psi and Venturi. And here we have the gauge. So let's turn it on directly to the Venturi pump. That would be the best scenario ever. And I'd say almost 900 millibar. About 900, I would say. Nine hundred millibar, and that equates to about twenty-six and a half inches of mercury, roughly. All right. Okay. So now let's do the same thing uh, on the plate. Okay. The gauge is now hooked in between the plate and the venturi pump, and let's see how much pressure we are getting this way. I have. Oh, by the way, the fittings that I use here are from Taylor's Pneumatic. I have bought from them several times, and I find their quality is uh, adequate for the home shop. Um, the nice thing is you get the you get the tubing, but you always have to buy like 10 of this, 10 of this, and 10 of this. And here they give you a kit actually, where they have a whole variety of connectors and everything for eight millimeter tubing is what I have here. So um, I leave you a link in the description if you like to get a kit like this as well. I think it's really handy and so far it has held good. All right, let's turn this on now. That is 0 0.63, 0 0.63, 0 0.63 I would say. 0.63 or 630 millibar, that's roughly 19 inches of mercury. So next let's calculate actually what type of force we are seeing uh, with this surface area right here as a hold down power. So I will only be able to grow my YouTube channel if you leave me a like. 
you find value in today's video, please hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So this is super easy to calculate. There is two things we need to know. Pressure equals force divided by area, Newton per square millimeters. So then if we need the force, or we're looking for the force, we bring o, F o, uh, A over to the other side, and that would look like this. F equals P pressure times the area. Okay, so the other element here, my gauge shows a bar, and we can show that one bar equals 0 0.1, <laughs> it's a different one now, 0 0.1 Newton per millimeter square. Okay, so we can calculate this now. Um, I have an area here of 235 by 95, and I just calculated that out. And that is that we have 22,325 uh, square millimeter. So that is A. A is 22,325 millimeter square. And the pressure we saw, I think, was 0 0.63. So P was a 0 0.63 bar, and we just multiply that by 0.1 to get Newton per square millimeter. So we get 0 0.063 Newton per millimeter square times the area of 22,325. So we multiply this by 0 0.063. That's 1,400, rough, a rough number. So we get F equals 1,400 Newton per millimeter square and of course multiplied by millimeter square so that would be Newtons. And on Mother Earth we're gonna just divide that by divided by 9.81 so then we get the, the equivalent mass so a mass of 143 kilogram will have a force of 1,400 newtons. That's quite a bit and that's why I don't even try to pry up that board when it's sucked down on that plate because I know I can't bring that up with my fingers. All right, so this is my compressor that came out of an air dryer. Um, the compressor in your refrigerator is going to look very similar to this. So this is air out, this is air in. And uh, even though that looks like a light switch right there, it's actually in a light switch box. But there is a um, GE, uh, Elm Bradley, actually a three quarter horse motor switch in there. So, same scenario. I'm going to hook up the gauge directly, like so, and just turn it on. And I think we can see here the highest amount of pressure or under pressure really. So negative pressure of 910, 910 millibar. And that is 25, 26, 27 inches of mercury. Now, the nice thing also is what you don't hear, quiet. So this unit is relatively quiet. I left it in this housing because it has vibration dampeners uh, on the feet and I think that works uh, really well. Okay. Okay, so this is the setup that I currently use that you see here. It involves a foot switch actually and that makes the uh, clamping really fast. I really like that. Um, I have it here on the table now, but let's turn it on and see what pressure we are getting. It should give us the best one, right? Because we had the highest maximum pressure with the gauge directly plugged in. And let's see what happens. Oops. We have 0.35 or one inch of mercury. 0.35. Wait a minute. How is that possible? Well, it has to do with the leaks that the plate and the wood and the seal has and the low airflow of this setup. For sanding and holding and work holding, this is fine on my MFT table. Um, I can still, if I move you right there for a second. So 
there is more air still coming out, so we are evacuating the entire time. But the system is leaking and the low airflow of the pump can just not overcome. And that is the maximum pressure, that uh, negative pressure that we are now getting. Okay, so that's an important piece of information. So here's a tip for you when you make a vacuum pump from a refrigerator compressor. The compressor itself has an oil in it and it's not designed to come in contact with air. It oxidizes and it will go bad and your compressor is going to fail relatively quickly. Pour that oil out. You don't have to open anything. You can pour it out the um, airline and then measure how much comes out and that you fill that, fill that back in. Now, I don't remember what oil I used, but knowing me, it was probably transmission oil fluid, ATF oil. Next one, when you build that Please remember those things get really hot. Uh, they're designed to continuously run, that is not a problem, but you will not be able to touch the outside of them, they can get really, really hot. Here I have a regenerative blower by Siemens. It has a one kilowatt uh, electric motor on it and a motor starter. And these are typical for a high volume, low pressure application. So it's not right for the small plates that we have here you would typically see bigger units than this, uh, more on a larger bed where we uh, try to suck a vacuum through um, the MDF plate or so. Now, this is the wrong application, but I'm gonna include it anyways. This is really the opposite from the refrigerator units that I showed you. The refrigerator unit cannot make uh, any volume, but it makes a lot of negative pressure or vacuum. So this one is the opposite. It generates a lot of volume, but just not that much pressure. So I have hooked up a little bit of a adapter in the back and let's turn this on. So we could see about 250 millibar. Just like the refrigerant unit, if this starts to deadhead where it doesn't get enough volume, it gets really hot. And the refrigerant unit also gets really hot, just as a side note. So the pump that I did not show you today is a rotary vein pump. I bought one of those from Harbor Freight. These would be the typical pump for evacuating AC systems, air conditioning. And the one from Harbor Freight, I set up in my shop and I let it run unattended for an hour or so and I come back and my whole shop is full with oil, dust, oil, oil vapors actually. It was like a fog in my shop. I returned it thinking it was faulty and I bought the larger one, did the same thing. Um, there's a certain oil level in there and I was disappointed because there's so many reports online, hey, that's what I'm using, works good for me. I cannot tell you to buy one of those because for me it just didn't work. So I think that an oil less pump would be a better choice. In the video today I wanted to demonstrate to you that there's a trade-off between you have either great air volume or you have great pressure. But to get a pump that has a decent amount of volume and yet a high amount of negative pressure or a high amount of vacuum that it produces, then you will be in probably three phase motors running on 220 volt or 400 volt and you will see units that run between 8 to 15 kilowatts and they are usually around let's say well they start at about 10 grand uh, and go up from there. So that would be for an industrial router that sucks the vacuum right through the MDF board on a 4x8 four eight, four eight machine. And you will also see that there's not a small uh, line going to that like I have, like it's as big as a finger. It more looks like a garden hose and there are several of those hooked up through valves. Okay, so I hope I could give you a good summary of um, how to build your own system and inspire you a little bit. That wraps up this series. I am designing a system right now that is actually for machining metal. It is a modular plate, 
So it has a base plate and a top plate that can be changed out. It also can index your workpiece. It's meant as a work holding for the CNC router to machine aluminum plates. And I possibly make a video about that as well. If you wanna know more about the individual videos, then uh, I can recommend you hop onto my webpage and there will be, not by the end of this video, but uh, soon there will be a write up on vacuum plates and also how to design them. Now, because you stayed um, this far, I'm gonna have one more tip for you as an extra bonus. So for the amount of work that I have in this plate now, I recommend that you don't make it from MDF. I did that as an example because as woodworkers we have that uh, on hand. But if you Google expanded PVC, a matter of fact, there is, um, an, I think I saw some of the sheets like in 12 by 12 or six by 12 on Amazon as well. If I find it, I'll leave you a link. So make it from an, an expanded PVC closed cell foam material. Uh, that, that works much better. It's uh, not permeable by air and uh, you don't have to do all the finishing steps. Next is that you see that I made these plates here with a radius and I did that on purpose. Most of the plates that I see, they have a sharp corner right there and it will damage the seal over time. And that sharp corner, especially if you make this plate in aluminum, will cause um, the seal to be cut because you can't really deburr de that. I mean, it's in the Z direction, right? And so making that a radius makes uh, for a better longevity of your seal, ro rope seal, that, that is. Okay, that was it for this video and I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Take care, bye.